Tarpayan Shapian over the house. Mahidveta said, Hey, Jadaha Sarvat Mana Shrita Krishna. Tarpayan Shapian over the house. Dvepayanad from Vyasadeva. Anavara in no way inferior. Mahitve in greatness. Dasya his Vyasas. Dehajaha born of his body. Saravatmana with all his heart. Sritaha took shelter. Krishnam, Lord Krishna. Tatparan, those devoted to him. Cha, and. Api, also. Anuvrataha, followed. Translation and poor by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Sarajala Prabhupada Ki Jai. Translation. Vidura was born from the body of Vyasadeva and was not less than he. Thus, he accepted the lotus feet of Krishna wholeheartedly and was attached to his devotees. Onto the purport. The history of Vidura is that he was born of a Sudra mother, but his seminal father was Vyasadeva. Thus, he was not less than Vyasadeva in any respect. Since he was born of a great father who was supposed to be an incarnation of Narayana, and who composed all the Vedic literatures, Vidura was also a great personality. He accepted Krishna as his worshipful lord and followed his instructions wholeheartedly. We will do Mangachan. Om Jnana Timidhandasya Jnana Jana Shalhakaya Chakshurun Militam Nena Tasmay Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupagadham Hayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurum Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahakana Raghunatan Vidam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Sabadutam Bhajana Sahetam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Hada Krishna Pada Sahakana Vita Shri Vishakad Vitamsya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta I had a Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Goyangi Rade Vinda Vaneshavi Vrishabhanu Sude Devi Panamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Dayubhasya Kripa Sindhu Bahavacha Patita nam pavane bio, Vaishna vipio namo namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadaya, Shri Vasadi Ghoya Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Um, I would like to welcome you to this morning's Shri Bhagavatam class. Just before I begin, um, I am in no ways qualified to sit on the Vyasasam, let alone speak. Um, there are many very exalted devotees present, um, so I'm not exalted. In any, I'm not qualified in any way. 
Um, please forgive me if um, I commit any offences. Please um, bless me so I can say the right words at the right time. Without any further ado, we'll start. There's a lot to cover. So um, firstly, this verse, I'll just read through the translation again, then we'll dive a bit deeper. Vidura was born from the body of Yasudeva and not less than he. Thus, he accepted the lotus feet of Krishna wholeheartedly and was attached to his devotees. So here, we'll break it in stages. We'll go line by line. So the first two lines, um, Basically, that goes into um, the point that Vidura was born from the body of Yasudeva and he was no less than he. So that's the first point. The second point is Sarvat um, Manasthita Krishna, which basically means that he was attached to the lotus feet of Krishna. Um, we'll get to that in a bit more detail in a later half. And finally, the last point that um, is made is Tadparam's Chapi Anuvrata, where he was also attached to those who were devoted to Krishna and who followed Krishna as well. So the first um, thing we should always bear in mind is that Vidura is no ordinary personality. Um, he is an incarnation, you know, incarnation from Yamaraj, and Yamaraj is no other than a Mahajana. So we need to understand that what we read today, um, we, essentially we should try and imbibe that in our own lives. We can't necessarily um, imitate, um, we can't follow, but at the same time we can learn from the instructions and try to um, apply that in our daily lives, especially the last three points. So. The two main lessons that Vidura teaches us here is that we should, number one, surrender onto Krishna's lotus feet. Second point is to um, be attached to the devotees. So, one, um, as we all know, um, Canto 3, no, Canto 6, Chapter 3, Text 21 to 22, where Yamaraj goes through all the um, 12 Mahajanas. There we know that in, at the end, um, he's obviously mentioned his own name as a Mahajana. So, um, in this material world, we are always after some sort of inspiration, some sort of motivation as well. Um, it doesn't matter what we are trying to do. It's normally in the materialistic concept, we try and have that role model that we try and you know, follow, try and emulate as well. Um, and inspiration only works when you see someone and you want to try and achieve um, what they've done. E.g., like right now, we do have many sporting events that happen. And um, there's a lot of um, there's a whole industry driven by those because people just want motivation. Um, at the same time, we need to understand that on a spiritual concept, our approach to motivation is slightly different. Um, I asked a question to um, Guru Maharaj. Um, I think it was in 2018 or 2019. Um, when we are distributing books, I asked him, uh, what should our motivation be? And Maharaj immediately cut me off there. He said, what do you mean by motivation? Um, and then at that time, I sort of understood what he meant. And then he said that motivation, we can't, we can't be results driven, but our motivation should be we should try and please Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, in his instructions, he said that we should try and distribute books. He never said he must distribute 10 books or 20 books. That's our own, um, not greed, but our own material standards that we set. Um, but our motivation should be just to try and serve Srila Prabhupada. Um, at the same time, we need to understand that the reason for ISKCON, the third purpose, is to bring the members of the society together, um, which is each other and near to Krishna. So we need to learn from other devotees. And um, this verse teaches us what to learn from Vidura. Um, just on material inspiration, um, when we have materialistic goals in mind, that can be very, very dangerous. Um, in the Mahabharata, the example is given of Karana and Arjuna. Um, as we know, Karana was a very, very more than qualified archer. He was wonderful. At the same time, because of his envy towards Arjuna, he had his own materialistic you know, ambition, his motivation to try and emulate him one day. And that didn't work out. We all know what happened at the end. So um, um, Gumhad said that we should try and follow in the footsteps of you know, our great teachers, our great acharyas. We can't emulate, but we have to learn from their practical examples. Um, so the first lesson that we can learn, not only from this verse, but in Vidura's life in general, it is the importance of surrender. Um, the, yep, so the, um, the third line, Sarvatmana is to Krishnam. Basically, word for word meaning, um, Sarvatmana means with all his heart, Srita means took shelter, and Krishna obviously means Krishna. Um, so Yamaraj, through his example, he shows us um, the mood that we should surrender to Krishna. 
Um, Srila Prabhupada in 1.1.13, he, no, 1.13, Chapter 13, chapter 13, there Srila Prabhupada clarifies the reason why Vidura appeared. Um, there are two reasons why Yamaraj appeared um, as Vidura. One is the external reason. We may know there was Manduka Rishi who cursed him. Um, but the second reason is much more internal, um, where he wanted to preach the version of service and he wanted to, you know, um, somewhere other fulfill his role as Mahajana. In um, in the purport to, I believe, verse number 13, Srila Prabhupada writes that he was one of the 12 Mahajanas, and as a Mahajana, it is the duty to try and preach. Um, we can see, um, you know, Swayambu Nayada Shambhu Kamara Kapralomanu, Pralada Janaka Bhishma, Balivaya Sakivayam. All those 12 uh, Mahajanas, there's some sort of preaching that they do. Narada Muni, we know 24 7, he's traveling the whole universe. Um, Brahma is another example. Um, even Lord Shiva, even Bhishma Deva, um, when he was lying on the bed. Um, in the Mahabharata, um, there were two parvas just on his instructions. So we can understand that the Mahajanas, their role is to preach. At the same time, um, Yamaraj, he, as we know, is a king, you know, he's, um, you know, based in, you know, Patal Loka. There, his main role is to, um, you know, punish, this, punish those who, you know, commit sinful activities in this material world. Um, and there, Sri Prabhupada says that he had a thought that um, you know, his role is to you know, take those who are corrupted and punish them. And in this material world, there are a lot more sinful people than there are devotees. Um, so obviously, it is a very, very laborious task. Um, so Yamaraj, he had a little time to actually you know, preach. He, all his time was dedicated to punishing the wrongdoers. So, um, yeah, it's very difficult, especially if you look in, of course, Yamaraj is Yamaraj, um, but in, you know, in our own federal court system, higher court system, um, the delays go on um, for you know, six months to two years, just waiting and waiting. I mean, judges don't have anything else to do. They just punish. So um, at the same time, um, Yamaraj, he had more work, Prabhupada Vats, he had more work to do than any other demigod who were also authorized, supreme, uh, authorized agents of the Supreme Lord. So... Because of that desire that he wanted to preach, um, Krishna's will, um, Krishna's Amaratha, he, he, you know, plays in miraculous ways, and he, you know, got that, um, fulfilled that um, devotee's desire. So then, as we know, he was later cursed by um, Mandaka Rishi. We know that um, um, one time Mandaka, Mandaka Rishi was mistaken to be a robber by a king, and the pink king punished him by piercing him with lances like spears. And he went to Yamaraj and he asked, why is this happening to me? And he said that once when you were a child, um, there was an ant and he pricked the ant with some grass or something. And Mandaka Rishi got very, very angry and he said that, um, you know, I committed this when I was an ignorant child. You can't necessarily punish me. And interestingly, in our current modern day system, um, legal system, um, we, ha we follow the same um, standard that Mandaka Rishi has set, that when you know kids commit sinful crimes, like big crimes, they can't necessarily be punished. That's one side. But um, then he cursed um, Yamaraj, that because you have you know um, ordained this for me, um, I curse you to be born as a Sudra for 100 years in the material world. So thus, as we know, he became Vidura. But we need to understand that even then, Yamaraj was fully surrendered. He was, I mean, if anyone gets cursed, I mean, myself, I can't speak for anyone else, but myself, I would be very, very livid. I would be um, a little bit aggressive as well. But as far as um, Yamaraj is concerned, he took it, you know, he was able to, you know, um, accept that and, you know, um, as Lucas did, as Chris said, he went and appeared in um, the material world. So we need to understand something that when we are dealing with calamities, the only way we actually um, overcome those calamities is through surrender. Um, there was one time, I think the last time His Holiness Bhakti Rasayana Saga Maharaj came to Sydney, there he gave an example and he said that uh, when we're dealing with calamities, when we are having any good situations, we have to see the evil in those good situations and when we have any bad situations, any difficult situations, you have to see the good in those situations. And I remember he spent 15, 20 minutes going through why this is so. 
Um, Christian, we need to understand that in when we have very good situations, the negative of that is that we have more of a tendency to forget Krishna. However, when bad situations happen, um, that is when our surrender actually starts to happen. Um, I don't know if you know, um, I mean, of course, myself, um, whenever like you know, there are any exams, I feel like that's the period of my chanting is very, very intense. Um, I mean, when we have very, we're in very difficult situations, um, Somehow or other, we have no other choice but to surrender to Krishna. There was also another example by Dev Kinnanan Prabhu, um, where he was saying that the secret to being peaceful is to have no stress, as we know. And to have no stress means to um, you know, have no sort of fear. And that fear essentially comes when we think that we are the controller. Um, he had a phone call with me, I think, a couple of months ago. And he was saying, you know, Achuta, I'll tell you one thing. Um, he said you can... When you are, you know, um, whether you're studying or whether you're, you know, making decisions or things like that, you need to understand that your role is just to do the process. The, dis the result, leave to Krishna. Because once we start worrying about the result, worrying about the outcome, like, you know, oh, I, I, for example, in this case, I got cursed, what am I going to do? Who's going to do this? What's going to happen? If we take that on ourselves, then um, it's neither fruitful for our own spiritual life, and it just builds up stress. So we need to leave everything to Krishna's hands. Um, in Bhagavad Gita 9.6, we all know very well that Srila Prabhupada uses the um, metaphor of a, a grass, and a grass, um, you know, is symbolic because a grass, grass doesn't move without. Krishna's will. If Krishna doesn't want the grass to move, the grass won't move. Um, so we need to understand that we, everything um, is up to Krishna and we have to surrender to him accordingly. So in this way, um, we can understand that Vidura was fully surrendered to Krishna. Here, um, Sri Prabhupada writes that he accepted the lotus feet of Krishna wholeheartedly. That is, you know, without any tinge of, you know, or in a personal ambition, personal desire, personal, you know, gaining of some results, it's just surrendering himself to Krishna. Um, even in Vodura's own life, it's not only in this verse, but in his whole life, he experienced many hardships. Um, for example, we know um, after Krishna went to Hasanapur as, you know, a peace messenger, once he left, there were many terrible omens, and um, Dhritarashtra held one final strategy meeting, um, you know, um, a, a discussion with um, everyone present. And at that time, um, as we know, Vidura was kicked out of the, of the palace by his own nephew. And even then he fully surrendered and he took the opportunity to go and, you know, um, as we know, went, go to matrimony and go on a pilgrimage afterwards. Um, just onto the past time, um, once in that meeting, um, Bhishma Deva did say that we've offended Lord Krishna himself, and because we've offended Krishna, there is no other alternative rather than to go to war. Um, our fate is decided, we have to go to war. And that Mahabharata says that Dronacharya agreed, and everyone else agreed, and Durada, Durana had a very, um, you know, a smirk on his face. And seeing this, even then, Vidura didn't step back, Vidura still did his duty, which was to correct um, Durana. And Durodhana said um, f two things. Two things. He said the first thing is that you have to return you to Maharaj, his rightful share of the kingdom. Um, we all know the past time on how Durodhana did take that kingdom away from him. Since Durodhana Maharaj is a Jatashatru, um, of course he doesn't have any enemies. At the same time, he said that Durodhana should be very fearful of. Bhima, who in this verse, in this um, section, is described as a, you know, a venomous snake. And the final thing he says is that he turns to Dhritarashtra and said that he has to stop supporting offense personified just by standing silent, um, and he has to be punished. When Dhritarashtra heard this, then he exploded, um, as many people do um, in this material world. He exploded and he said that he was not a friend to the Kurus, he was deceitful and he was, you know, taking the side of the enemy. So Vidura, um, um, his response to this is that he stayed simple, quiet, um, no, simple, silent and smiling. Um, even if we go, I think there's a, um, in Bhagavatam, I think Chitraketa Maharaj, um, when, um, maybe I might, might, might have got the name wrong, but um, when he you know, goes on the plane and sees um, Lord Shiva 
um, giving you know Bhagavatam class with Parvati on his lap, then he says a few things. And but Lord Shiva, he's the same three words I used. He was simple, silent, and smiling. So once we directed this, he stayed quiet. He you know left, and he took the opportunity to um, progress further. So the first lesson. Um, is um, the first lesson, as we know, is to take short of Krishna. One interesting point, um, I don't know if you have the word to word in front of you, but there, um, Srila Prabhupada writes, you know, with all his heart, then took Shota, um and then Krishna. But if we go to the translation, there Srila Prabhupada adds an extra phase. He adds, he accepted the lotus feet of Krishna. Now, here, the word lotus feet, it's very, very significant. Every word that is in Bhagavatam, as we know, there is some sort of meaning. Nothing is by mistake. So it's interesting that Srila Prabhupada added the word lotus feet. Um, why? We need to understand what is so special about the lotus feet, um, especially um, when we you know, try and take shorter of Krishna. Why don't we take shorter to his eyes, his mouth, um, his smile, why, hand wide to the lotus feet? So um, there is a lot of things that are very important to consider. Even if we go to Kundi Maharani prayers um, 1.8.36, um, Srimanti Gayanti, that verse, um, um, Kundi Maharani says that after... Um, you know, engaging in hearing and chanting and remembering the Supreme Lord, eventually what happens is that they attain the, um, Krishna's lotus feet at the end of this life. So um, we need to understand that Krishna's lotus feet, it is um, a way that we can, you know, remember his mercy. Um, his Holiness um, Bhakti Rasayana Sagar Maharaj, again, he was saying that... Um, the symbols that are on Krishna's lotus feet, we may know that in Krishna's lotus feet there are several symbols that are there. Um, you know, there's one cow hoof print, there's one chakra, there's one um, lotus flower. All these, they mean different things. And um, this allows the devotee to see that once we take shelter of Krishna, um, Krishna then um, allows us to progress further into devotional service. Um, we were recently in Vrindavan, and the Lagavan people said that he could do a whole seminar just on the lotus feet of Krishna. So we don't have much time, so I won't go through exactly everything. But um, His Holiness Satchinandan Maharaj has actually gone through Krishna's lotus feet in a lot more detail, um, in a very simple way. Um, for example, um, in Krishna's lotus feet, there is obviously the impression of a cow hoof print that is at the top. The cow hoof print, um, essentially that is symbolic that when a devotee takes shelter of Krishna's lotus feet, um, the whole ocean of material existence, which is, you know, the, um, it's like a big ocean of three form miseries, um, that gets reduced to a simple cow hoof print. So that is the benefit of surrendering under Krishna's lotus feet. Like that, there are many other things as well. For example, um, on Krishna's lotus feet, there is a bow, but that bow doesn't have a string attached to it. So Lagavan Prabhu said that this means that in a devotee's life, what they surrender to Krishna, that false ego, that sense of pride, that gets removed. Um, another thing is, um, you know, th there's um, a chakra that is on the lotus feet. Um, and um, Shachananda Maharaj just said that this means that when we surrender unto Krishna, with, the ch um, with that wheel, Krishna um, um, eradicates all of our, you know, the six enemies of our own spiritual devotional life. Um, we know um, Edo's desire, anger, jealousy, moha, pride, and vengeance. Um, that's by the chakra. And like this, it goes on and on, like there's a thunderbolt. Um, the thunderbolt, the vajra, it, um, it smashes the mountain of our own sinful activities that we accumulate lifetime after lifetime. Um, we accumulate so many um, sinful activities, what to say, even in one day, um, it's scary to think of what we do, but that, um, there it's described as a big mountain, but just um, by standing on the Christian side of the street, that mountain is destroyed completely. And um, like this, it goes on and on. I can take um, a bit more time, but I'll move on. And. So we need to understand that to actually thrive in Krishna consciousness, it is imperative that we take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Um, once we actually take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet, um, it becomes a lot more easier to progress. Um, otherwise, by ourselves, how can we get rid of our, you know, our big mountain of sinful activities? How can we get rid of our pride from, through that mechanical exercise? It's not easy. It's easier said than done. So. Um, we need to understand that um, we have to take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. One interesting verse is um, in chapter four, no, in Canto four, chapter 23, text 39. 
Shilpapada writes in the purport that this cosmic manifestation, which is compared to an ocean of the science, is also resting on the lotus feet of the Lord. As such, this great ocean of the science is minimized by a person who was a pure devotee. Then um, Shilpapada goes on to say something that's very, very um, strong. He says that one who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord need not cross over the ocean, for he has already crossed it by virtue of his position at the Lord's Lotus Feet. Simply by taking shelter of Krishna's Lotus Feet, um, what to speak of the universe, nothing can actually um, you know, hold us back. Um, now we'll go on to the um, last line that is on the verse. Tatparam um, Shapi Anuvrata. There, um, Srila Prabhupada writes, Tatparam, um, as in those who are devoted to him, um, Cha and, and then um, Api, also Anuvrata followed. So when he says devoted to him, that is implied that it's Krishna. Um, so here we can understand that Vidura um, gives us a very practical example of Saru Sangha. Um, Yes, he was. He did accept the lotus feet of Krishna wholeheartedly, but at the same time, he also took shelter of his devotees. Um, now, this is the correct mood on how we should actually hear Shrimad Bhagavatam, how we should read Shrimad Bhagavatam as well. Um, one question that may arise is, why did Vidura actually go to Maitreya Muni um, to seek spiritual enlightenment in the first place? Um, was he, was he you know, to gain knowledge or enlightenment? Many answers can be given, but one very important thing to consider is that Vidura had no shortage at all of any sort of spiritual knowledge. He had no shortage. He was already um, more than qualified. In Shrima Bhagavatam 1.13.15, um, Sri Prabhupada says that even though he, um, he, as in Vidura, accepted that he was a Sudra by birth, because he renounced the board for spiritual enlightenment um, by the authority of um, Rishi Maitre and was thoroughly educated by, um, in transcendental knowledge, he was quite competent to occupy the post of an Acharya or spiritual preceptor. So here Sri Prabhupada says that Vidura is more than qualified to you know, take the position of an Acharya. Um, and then he adds on to say that according to um, Sri um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, anyone who is conversant in transcendental knowledge or the science of Godhead, whether he's a Brahmana or a Sudra, um, or a householder or a Sanyasi, he's eligible to become spiritual master. Um, we also know in, um, in um, Madhya Lila, I believe chapter seven, I think one, two, seven, um, where when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going to South India, there, um, there is one Kumara Brahmana, and um, he expresses his desire to, um, um, you know, um, go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he says that, he says two verses. The first verse is, you know, we have to say and you have to chant um, Krishna's holy name. The second verse is, as we know, Yaritaka um, Daheka Krishna Upadesh. Um, he says that you should always try and preach Krishna's glories. Um, so there, um, we need to understand that um, Vidura, um, the main essence is that he was already more than qualified. Um, there was no, um, I'm not going to say no need, but he um, was already had so much knowledge, so then why did he actually go to Merit Ceremony? Um, Mahabharata actually shows us there are many, many advanced qualities that Vidura had. Even though he was born as a Sudra, um, even Bhagavatam in this verse says that he was no less than Vyasadeva. Um, the past, I mean, is very detailed. Um, but um, when writing about you know the three brothers, um, Pandu, Dhritarashtra, and then Vidura as well, Vyasadeva actually um, takes some time and he um, describes Vidura's qualities. He says that he was naturally very wise from childhood and he was unmatched in his devotion and religiousness. And when he reached um, his you know, maturity age, he was so spiritually advanced and he was so knowledgeable that even Bhishma Dev, who is a, another Mahajana himself, he would go to Vidura asking for advice, asking for counsel. Um, like the example is given, um, that when um, there were you know, three princes, princesses, um, Gandhari, Kunti, and then Madhu. He sought Vidura's advice first on whether you know, the brothers should get married. So we need to understand that there is absolutely no shortage in um, Vidura's knowledge. However, the reason that he is taking shelter of Maitreya Muni is to actually show us that we need to take shelter of Vidura Devotee. Um, even if you look at the Mahajanas, all the Mahajanas take, shelters of, take shelter of Vidura Devotees. Um, they are in 
they are, or, I mean, already they are very, very exalted. There's Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj, from you know, being born, he was, um, you know, he was very, very exalted. Um, even then, he still accepted Narada Bunya as his spiritual master. And it goes on and on. Um, in Hari Bhakti Vilas by um, Sanatana Goswami, um, 2.10, he writes that it is the duty of every human being to surrender unto a bona fide spiritual master. Giving him everything, body, mind, and intelligence, one has to take rational initiation from him. So essentially, it is the duty of every living entity to take shelter of a pure devotee. And um, Vidura is showing this through his own example, that even though he himself is a very, very pure devotee, like he left um, the whole um, palace in Hasanapura because he was already exalt more than exalted. He already had that understanding. Still, he went and sought Sadhu Sangha. Um, and how... Um, one should take shelter is the reason we shouldn't to take shelter is also in 1.1.15 there Shri Prabhupada writes in the Purva that to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord means to take shelter of a pure devotee so we've just covered in the third line that we have to take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet but here in the beginning of Bhagavatam Krishna, um, Shri Prabhupada writes that to take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet it means taking shelter of the pure devotees first um, similarly, like um, you know, we you know, we have to you know in Panchatattva there are obviously um, before we chant our rounds before we you know chant the Mahamantra we chant first our own spiritual masters Panamantra then we go into Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pramodananda Shri Vaidya Gadadhar Shri Sadhu Bhaktivinoda and we go on then we chant the Mahamantra um, we have to take short of pure devotees first before we actually progress further so back to the theme. Um, we have to um, take shelter of a pure devotee. As I was saying earlier, the Mahajanas teach us this very, very clearly. Um, for example, Narada Muni, um, before Narada Muni became Narada Muni, he, you know, in his childhood, in his previous life, he took shelter of um, the sages um, and he um, received the guidance from them. Brahma, as we know, that went, you know, um, he took shelter of, you know, um, Krishna as his spiritual master and followed his instruction, just one word to do, you know, tapasya, and he, you know, dedicated his um, life towards that understanding instruction. Lord Shiva, um, as we know, he's obviously very eager to get the association of devotees, especially in Ramayana as well. Prahlad Maharaj, as I gave the example, there's Narada Muni. Even Bhishma Dev, um, he had. Um, four separate teachers, um, four spiritual masters. He obviously had Parshuram, where he learned, you know, martial knowledge and military knowledge. For practical knowledge, he, you know, got knowledge from Brihaspati. Um, he got knowledge from Vishisht, um, Vishif, um on spiritual knowledge, and then Sukhachaya on ethics. So, um, even though you know um, they are already more than exalted, they show us that we have to be very eager to actually take shelter of a pure devotee and take shelter to actually gain um, more knowledge. It's not that we are qualified. Um, I fall into this trap quite easily. I read one chapter or even one verse. I'm like, okay, I'm done for the day. I'm ready more than more than um, knowledgeable, but that's not the case. Uh, we have to keep reading because um, we can't necessarily let go. Um, we also see in verse. Um, 8 of chapter 1 of the first canto. Srila Prabhupada writes that the secret to success in spiritual life is to satisfy the spiritual master and get his blessings. Um, without, you know, um, without the spiritual master's blessings, we can't proceed further. I remember there was one class given by one devotee, I can't remember his name, it was quite some time ago, and it was in, there were a lot of new devotees, and one person raised the question that um, you know, in India, um, there is the pastime of Mirabai, um, who you know um, took shelter of Krishna, and he raised the point that Mirabai didn't really um, have a spiritual master, so why should we? And um, that devotee made a very strong point that we aren't Mirabai; we have to um, follow the right process, right channel. He was already exalted; we have to sort of um, understand that we have to take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Um, Lagavan Prabhu, um, he was in um, Faridabad, and he spent. Uh, he we had a he had a um, Bhagavad Gita on um, the four verses that Vritasur offers to Krishna um, when he's fighting with Indra, and he was going to spend the whole seven days on four verses. He spent two days on one word, and that was Dasanu Daso. 
And he was going on and explaining that to take shelter of Krishna, one has to take shelter of a pure devotee first. So we can understand that if we want to progress further, the shelter of a pure devotee is very, very important. Um, there is another example um, in the pastime of Gajendra. He was explaining that um, um, when you know Gajendra was fighting with um, you know a crocodile for 1,000 celestial years, and finally, once he actually gave up, he, you know, lifted up a lotus flower and he offered prayers to Vishnu, offered prayers to Krishna. And Krishna came, but the question comes, who did, um, who did Krishna liberate first? Krishna, did he liberate Gajendra first or did he liberate someone else first? And the answer he gives is he actually liberated the crocodile first. The reason is because the crocodile was holding on to um, Krishna, um, you know, Gajendra's feet. There can be two interpretations. One was obviously to free Gajendra, but he didn't liberate Gajendra first. He liberated the crocodile first. So there we need to understand that even the devotee was obviously, I mean, the crocodile was obviously fighting with Gajendra, but we need to understand that we have to always hold on um, to the lotus feet of a, of a pure devotee without wasting any time. Once that is done, um, we can actually go back to Godhead. Here, um, the word wholeheartedly is used very significantly. Wholeheartedly means we have to have without any sort of, um, um, you know, any sort of, um, any, any, without even holding back. One, another interesting point that we can raise is um, in the word for word meaning, um, um, in the last line, it's translated Tatparan as those devoted to him, Cha and Api also, and Uvrata followed. So here the main point is that the pure devotee, he, um, he's following those who are devoted to Krishna. But here um, in the translation, Srila Prabhupada adds another word, and he says, Thus he accepted the lotus feet of Krishna Hawadli and was attached to his devotees. Not just followed, but attached to his devotees. So to understand attached, um, we can understand in the case of um, Gajendra that attached means to hold on to a devotee's lotus feet constantly. Um, that's the whole purpose of initiation. That's the reason that we have to proceed, that's the way that we can progress further. And we are very, very fortunate that in, um, in you know, ISKCON, um, Bhaisal Prabhupada's mercy, we have been given so many um, books. Um, Krishna, um, Shri Prabhupada has you know, spent so much time um, giving us his own association through his books. And um, we can't really waste any time because there's always some sort of way where we can actually build that attachment to Shri Prabhupada. Um, in 2018, um, I think, um, he was Guru Maharaj's Vyasa Puja and he was giving a class. And Guru Maharaj, I, if you've seen Guru Maharaj, he's very, um, always, you know, very, he's very peaceful, he's always very happy. But I think this is probably the only one class I can really remember where he was in a very, he was in a chastising mood that day. And the reason was because the day before, um, there was, I think there was a Rathayatra, and there was only one devotee who was distributing books. And then Srila Prabhupada said that, uh, no, then Guru Maharaj said that this devotee was in Gold Coast as well from Australia. This was in Malaysia. Big Rig Rathayata, only one devotee doing book distribution. Maharaj wasn't happy at all. And then he was saying that first we have to do book distribution. Then he said that we have to actually read the books because then we get association. Then there was, I think, maybe 50 or 60 devotees there, a lot of senior devotees there too. He said, everyone, put your hand up if you read Bhagavad Gita. Most people put their hands up. Then he said, how many people have read Nectar of Devotion? Some hands went down, few people had their hands up. Then he went through, he said, Shri Bhagavatam, first canto, second canto, read the whole of Shri Bhagavatam, read whole Chaitanya Charitamrita, read whole Shri Prabhupada Lilamrita, all Shri Prabhupada's lectures, all Shri Prabhupada's letters. By the time he finished, everyone's hand was down. <laughs> so, um, he even went, he said, even lectures, le lectures, even conversations, they weren't, you know, um, even myself, my hand was down at the right, at, right at the beginning. But um, Mahajaranda made a very, very strong point that we have to get association. There is no shortage of resources to get association for the Prabhupada. First, he created ISKCON. ISKCON is a way that, you know, we have association with so many pure devotees. Um, even in Sydney, there are so many wonderful, wonderful devotees. And Srila Prabhupada has given us so many books. Um, there was one question um, given um, 
I think last year there was one devotee from Melbourne, and in a Zoom class he gave a question to Kumarhat that can we read other devotional books? Um, I think it was I think Gopal Champu. He was saying, are we allowed to read other books? And Kumarhat said that Sri Prabhupada gave the instruction that that's not necessary, but we need to understand. He Prabhupada, um, Maharaj was. Um, um, I won't say against, but he wasn't very favourable when it came to listening, um, you know, reading other devotees in you know, other devotees in the, in the Sampradaya. Of course, we can read, but Prabhupada said the first priority should be Srila Prabhupada always. Um, especially, um, I remember he was giving another instruction to me actually. He was saying that, you know, you should get like a lecture box. Lecture box, like there's an audio recording that has Prabhupada lectures going on and on. He said you should, you know, whenever you're eating breakfast, whenever you're doing anything, have that lecture box running. So you're constantly, constantly having that association. So we need to understand that devotee association is very important. Only by devotee association can you actually remain attached. So it is 8.40. I think I'll stop here very soon. Um, just a quick summary um, is that Vidura firstly came down as a Mahajana to actually show us um, how to live our life perfectly, how to actually you know, surrender to the Supreme Lord, and how has to, one has to take shelter of the pure devotees. Um, on that note, I think I'll conclude here. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm not qualified to answer any questions. But, uh, yes, Prabhupada. That's a very good question, Prabhuji. Um, I'm not qualified to answer, but I will say what I know. Um, in Mahabharata, in that section, where, um, um, you know, um, as we know, um, there was a disaster that happened in Hastinapur, and, um, you know, to create progeny, Vyasadeva came, and there was Ambika and Ambalika as well. Um, one thing we should understand is with, with I'll say this past time, then I'll actually answer the question because it sort of answers it. Um, the thing is, the first one was, as we know, Ambika. Um, Ambika, um, when it came time, um, Ambika obviously closed her eyes and she was very preserved. She didn't have that, um, that um, you know, submissiveness. And because of that, after um, that, um, Vyasadeva said that this child would be born blind because she closed her eyes and she was very aloof. She said that similarly, Dutarash will you know, close his eyes and remain aloof. Secondly, there was um, 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 Ambalika. Ambalika, um, there was Pandu. Obviously, her eyes were open, but she had that fear um, and um, she was still had that little bit of, she was still a little bit reserved. And um, because of that, her skin turned pale. So then um, the, um, Vyasadeva says that the child will be born, he'll be healthy, I mean, he'll, he won't, he'll be unhealthy, and his skin will be pale, and he will live, live a very short life. Finally, um, then it comes to Vidura. The reason I'm saying this past time, I actually understand it before. Um, as we know, there was a maidservant, and the maidservant, she had that servant attitude. Similarly, um, because she was, you know, very... Um, um, you know, humble, we reciprocated nicely. Then Vyasadeva said that this person will have um, the same qualities that I do. So we need to understand that yes, the question does come. Dhritarashtra was Vidura's brother, but Dhritarashtra took a long time to actually understand. Um, we need to understand that it also depends on one's upbringing as well. Um, Vidura was more than qualified. Um, you could also say the mother as well. Another point is that um, here, he was from the body of Yasadeva, not less than he. But we need to understand that if we go past life, Vidura was Yamaraj. We know that Dittarash, in his past life, he also committed a few sinful activities. Um, so, yes, karma is, as you mentioned, does play a part, but also, um, um, you know, the upbringing also does play a part as well. Hope that answers the question, Vivrudi. Any other questions? Yes, Vivrudi. It was very interesting, um, something that I didn't click to before. But um, 
because the live crocodile was holding onto the lotus feet of a pure devotee. Um, like, this is why he was explaining Da Samo Da So. Vritasura in this verse, he's saying that he wants to be the servant of the servant of the servant of um, um, Krishna's lotus feet, uh, the servant of Krishna's lotus feet. So um, that's one very practical example that we can actually apply. Um, yes, I think it's uh, nearly 8.45. I think I'll conclude here. Continue. Any other questions? Yes, Prabhupada. Yes. That is a very good question, Prabhuji. Um, yeah, normally when we get stuck to the negative, then we can get that pessimistic attitude. Um, I remember Maharaj was giving, of course I'm not qualified to answer this question, but Maharaj was giving a class um, in France, and he was saying that, um, yes, we need to understand that um, it, you know, when we see negative, he gave an example for like something else, but I'll really link it back to this. He was saying that um, when it comes to doing devotional service, um, sometimes we, it's good to be humble, um, but when we are being humble, sometimes we try and demoralize ourselves a bit too much. And Guru said that, yes, we can be humble, but if we try and put too much negative, then um, he said you have to use some common sense. If we say, you know, I'm so unqualified, I'm so unqualified, then it can reach a stage where it can be, um, it just, um, it won't be favorable to Christian consciousness at all. So in the same way that applies to this, of course, in when it comes to positive situations, we should obviously have that little bit of fear that we might be able to fake Krishna. At the same time, that positiveness, that it is everything's by Krishna's, you know, Krishna's will, Krishna's desire, um, and by that way, um, we won't maintain that purely negative. We shouldn't be like, I don't want anything good to happen in my life. That's not reasonable. But um, we should also understand that uh, um, whatever happens, it's by Krishna's arrangement, and Krishna is giving this to us. Um, we have to understand that it might be because I might, Samantha might, you know, deteriorate a bit, and we have to take that forward. That makes sense. Yes, Prabhuji. That's a very good question, Prabhuji. Um, I'm not knowledgeable enough to answer this question. Um, as far as, uh, I think Ganshan probably can probably answer that question a lot better than I can. But um, as far as having a role to play, um, to those who, you know, um, go for, to you know, progress further, that is the whole reason why the past of Mavaduru is here. He is a Mahajana, and all Mahajanas, as you say, they should, um, you know, try and bring pure devotees up to Krishna. And Yamaraj is showing us through his own practical example. Um, there is no other reason why he's listening to Maitre Muni. The only reason is so that he can actually teach us um, to actually progress further. Um, so that is the role that Yamaraj does play um, as far as Vidura is concerned, as far as his role um, as um, you know, as Yamaraj. And forgive me, Prabhupada, I'm not super um, knowledgeable to answer that question. But um, we need to also understand that um, it's only by the pure devotees' examples, their teachings, that we can actually progress forever. Thank you, Prabhuji. Mataji, yes.
Very, very good question, Mataji. Um, you did mention a few very interesting examples there. Firstly, um, Gurm, um, you did mention that if one insults a spiritual master, that is obviously, that's Vaishnava proud. And Gurmaraj, um, he did actually give me a personal ex um, a lesson here. He said that when um, it comes to, you know, Vaishnava proud, it's always good to try and speak up only in those situations. We try not to build anger. But at the same time, he said another uh, simple thing is you can just you know, walk out, just keep quiet and walk out. Um, that was the first half of the question. But as far as, um, you know, building up that um, um, that anger that can happen, um, Mataji, essentially the anger does matter on, our, matter on our perspective. If we see it to be something negative, then we will build up that anger and it can, as you say, um, can impact our sudden later on. Um, anger only happens when we perceive it to be something that's bad. Um, if it's if we have that perspective that if, in the end it's Krishna's desire, it's Krishna's own, um, of course, person, if it's to a devotee, then we have to obviously stand up. But if it's to ourself, then we have to understand that it's because of Krishna's own will. And we have to see Krishna's hand in everything. Example, like we know um, the Pandavas, how much suffering they went through. Um, it's unbelievable. Um, and of course, we need to understand that uh, Krishna's hand does play in ways that we don't understand. Um, but at the end, we will understand. And Krishna does um, um, whatever he does is the best for us. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, on that note, I think I'll conclude here. Um, Thank you very much. Um, if I've, I know there are many senior devotees here. Please forgive me if I um, said anything that is uh, wrong or offensive. Um, please bless me back in progress um, and purify myself. Gantarajma Bhagavatam Mahapurana ki, Shila Prabhupada ki, Shila Gurudev ki, Nitai Gora Pemanande.